Hey there, friends. How are you doing today? Hopefully you're having a fantastic start to your week or whenever you're listening to this podcast. Welcome to the Creative Shop Talk podcast. Today I'm going to share 10 simple ways that we can level up our shop be a little bit better than the others. That's what we need to do. We had customer experience expert Shep Hyken here on the podcast recently, and he made a really great case study or point about talking about being just a percentage better than your competitor or better than the rest. Like why would your customers choose you? So we talk about customer experience a lot here and it's a big focus on the Creative Shop Talk podcast. And today I'm gonna give you 10 simple ways that you can take a look at what you're doing inside your shop and really with little tiny baby steps, uh, level up what you're doing in your business. So before we get started, though, I want to remind you that if you are looking for more hands-on help with your business, with your retail business, please check out our programs and services. You can find us at wendybatten.com and we have a monthly coaching group for our shop owners at the Retailers Inner Circle. It's a monthly coaching group. It's an amazing group of really um, smart and educated and savvy retailers, uh, independent shop owners trying to grow their business together and brainstorming together and having lots of fun. And we have round tables and Q&A and I'm in there all the time. So join us in there. It's the easiest, I guess, way to join us. If you want a little bit more handholding and deeper help, I also have consulting services available and our mastermind, our uh, accelerator mastermind, which is a fantastic group of retailers, just the next level, I would say. And the conversation is just a little bit different in there, a little bit deeper, a little more hands-on, well, a lot more hands-on with me and our mastermind. And we are currently accepting applications for the mastermind group. So if you're interested in joining us there, it's a fantastic group. You've met retailers uh, in the past from my mastermind have been here on the podcast, featured on the podcast, and we would just love to have you join us. So feel free to join us over there. You can find out all the information at wendybatten.com and just check under work with me and check out the mastermind. We would love to see your application come through. I check every one of them and it's more about availability and making sure that you're a right fit, not, you know, we're not just being all (laughs) weird about the application, but we'd love to see your application come through and love for you to join us there on the mastermind. All right, let's get to our 10 simple ways that we can level up our shop. Let's do it. Running a retail business doesn't have to be so hard. Welcome to the Creative Shop Talk podcast, the go-to podcast for creative shop owners, studio owners, and independent retailers. I'm your host, Wendy Batten, retail business coach and mentor. Each week, I'll share simple, proven business strategies, inspiring stories from fellow retailers, and advice from industry experts. Together, we're going to work to find the success you want from your retail business with more profits in your till and a little more joy in your life. Okay, why, you know, why do we want to level up and change things? And you know, we're already doing things really well, Wendy, you know, what are you talking about? Here's a reminder that with every touch point, with every thing that a customer experiences in our shop, we want their experience to be perfect, right? We want it to be really good and just a little bit better than anybody else's. There's an intangible feeling that people have when they think of your shop, right? We want it to be, we want them, you know, they'll, they'll spend more when they feel good in our shop. They'll return, they'll talk about us. There's just this feeling that they get in their gut when they think of our shop. And that's what we want, right? We want them to do it by just a little bit better of doing all of these things, just a little tiny bit better. So taking a little bit of time, with every one of these touch points that we're going to talk about and just tweaking. It's not, you know, it's not changing the way you do business. It's just paying attention and tweaking because they stow that away in their brain, right? In the back of their brain, when they're making their decisions, whether they're going to come back to your shop, whether they're going to talk about you, whether, you know, all of the things, and you know that as a customer in other stores, 
when there's just something, something, something a little bit special about, you know, this store or that store or this shop. And we want that to be you. So here are a few things. I, again, I've got a list of 10, but of course there's all kinds more, but it's really focusing on our customer's experience inside our shop and how do we make it just a little bit better. I, I say 1% better, but you can make it 100 or 20% better, but just little tweaks and shifts make a difference. Okay. One of the things about all of these things, I just want to just remind you, we have to have a culture in our business where every guest coming in that we're paying attention, we have to have a culture of paying attention, of attentiveness, I guess, is the word I'm trying to say. And if we think of it that way, as I go through this list, um, you'll see how it makes sense, I guess, a little bit. We need to educate and lead by example as well. Okay, so the first one up, the first thing is having a clean shop. So inside the retailer's inner circle, inside my inner circle and um, in our in our library, in our in our master classes, we have a shop standards um, class. I think I've even talked about it here before. And one of the things is, you know, making sure that our shop is clean. And I know that we think it's clean. <laughs> I know we do. But I really want you to have a good look around. It's unconscious, unconscious, unconscious. <laughs> me and my words again sorry guys it's what our customers feel when they're in our shop whether like they see they see the dirty they don't always see the clean right and I know I've shared that before but think about it they see the dirty they don't always see the clean and maybe it's clutter or dead leaves on trees or the high dusting hasn't been done in a while and there's spider webs up there maybe it's you know um, the bathroom experience if you have customers using your bathroom is it grungy and gringy and dirty and maybe just you know really yucky um and not necessarily in dirt maybe it's just the fixtures is are there things that we can fix up and clean up does it feel good is it is it an experience inside the bathroom it sounds a bit much but you know is your team of observant are you being observant of all the nooks and crannies in your shop the second thing is the chaos behind your counter in your studio, uh, you know, wherever, you know, whatever, whatever part of your public viewing you have, does it feel chaotic to your customer? Is, is it organized? It, did you, does it flow? You know, is there, is there a flow towards like everybody knows where everything is or they're trying to find and make change and, you know, the, the paper runs out and they don't know where to fill it. And this is not in itself something that's going to make a customer say, oh, I'm never shopping here again. But again, subliminally, subliminally, <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say. You know, that that uh, intangible thing, it's just a little, another little nugget of, wow, this place isn't very professional. I tripped over boxes there. The bathroom's really dirty. People aren't making those conscious connections, but it's the overall thing, right? So what's it like? What's the chaos or is it chaotic behind your counter or during classes in, in studios or, you know, is it an uh, unorganized mess when you're trying to show somebody, you know, or trying to find samples for something or find more products or, or pricing? I've had uh, the experience recently where I was in a really beautiful, gorgeous shop. Lovely, lovely. I was like, so wow, this is beautiful. I'm in here and it's gorgeous. And, you know, the, 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 um, the girl that was working who wasn't the owner, but that doesn't matter, right? Because it doesn't matter who's, who's serving me. Um, it's the person couldn't find the pricing and didn't know how to find it and didn't know. And she was like, then she couldn't find the sizes. And, I was, you know, we have to make sure that we are not chaotic in our presentation in the way we serve our customers. So whether behind the counter in the studio, that's something that has to be checked at. And how can you be a little bit better? How can you streamline that a little tiny bit better? Number three, ease of checkout. So if you have an online store, we all know how chaotic and clunky it is. If you have to jump through a bunch of hoops, and I know some of you have online stores or you know e-commerce as part of your brick and mortar the same is true for your checkout if it is uh, long lineups do you need another cash wrap pay attention <laughs> if retailers who are adding you know two and three cat you know stations to their um, to their cash wrap because they see and they realize it's a pain in the butt for their clients to line up and we want that we want we want them to be we want to be busy enough that we need two and three cash wraps or, or POS stations but 
ask yourself, what can we do to be a little bit better, a little bit more efficient, a little bit faster? How can we still serve with excellence, but move people along the lineup? How can we make sure that they are being served with a smile and not, you know, again, chaotic and it's easy. And I don't put my things down because oh, it's not, it's not worth that lineup or it's just so awkward when you're checking out. It takes forever. Anybody ever watch that um, scene? And I can never remember the movie. It's one of my favorite movies. And I'm trying to think of it now. And it's, I'm going to have to take this out now of the podcast, but um where Mr. Bean is wrapping the present and at Christmas and he's putting the cinnamon stick in and whatever. We have to make sure we do that quickly. This is what I'm, that will pop up to me before the end of the podcast when I'm trying to remember. But anyhow, I digress again, as I do. But I just want to make sure that your ease of checkout, pay attention to your ease of checkout. Some of you guys are yelling out the name of that movie, aren't you, right now? <laughs> it's, it's a favorite movie I can't think of. Anyhow, we're, uh, you know, just making sure it's quick and efficient for your clients and think about it that's what you like too right uh, number four is signage and we can even carry that over into price tags or tagging making sure that it's correct that it's helpful that it's useful you know that it's the right information nothing is more frustrating to your clients when they there's no price tag on something they walk around and and, and again these aren't things that they're going to like write you a message about like I'm super frustrated because you know it took an extra two minutes at the cash and there were no prices on the things people aren't going to do that it's just all these little things that add up so making sure prices on everything you have in your shop I want to see everything with a price tag or super clear signage about pricing and y'all know right just between you and me, people don't read signs, right? So we want to make sure that the signs are that are there are legible and clear and obvious, I guess, is what I want to say. And make sure everything is priced. And that's just a little tiny friction step. We want to make sure um, that is good and not confusing. I actually uh, had a client the other day show me a price tag uh, a sign that she had done up and she realized she said she printed it up she had it in her shop she had it on the counter and then she said oh Wendy would tell me this is so confusing and <laughs> she took it down and redid it and it was it was like buy two and save eight percent or I don't know it was something bananas we want to make sure things are clear and legible and easy right Remember our motto, clear is kind for our clients. So that is something we want to make sure is our signage and our price tags are um, everywheres and clear and on everything. Okay, number five, how to level up just a little tiny bit in your shop. Number five is the atmosphere, like the sounds and the smell of your shop. Now I know visually your shop, I can picture it right now, but your shop is just beautiful. I know it is. I know you have beautiful things. And you have smiley staff and you have, you know, lighting because we've talked about that. You have signage and you're doing all these things. But I don't, but don't forget the sound that you want to make sure there's like the soundtrack of your shop is the same all the time. We want to make sure the soundtrack of your shop is the same, whether like it's a type of music or whatever, the playlist, the style, the type of music is the same that triggers so much for your, for your clients. You have no idea and smell which I know is crazy but I mean there's a reason that they pipe in smells into Disney World and they pipe in smells into uh, waffle places or whatever there's a reason for that because smell is directly wired to your brain they all the studies show you know that when you smell something it reminds you now saying that there's also lots of conversations around the hood here in retail world that you know you don't want negative smells that might trigger something bad but you're pretty safe if you have a nice smelling shop so consider smell smell an important thing but not too much smell because the opposite effect has um happened as well and you probably again know what i'm talking about there right we have too much smell or strong smell that is going to turn people off so make sure you have a subtle nice pleasant smell and make sure you have music on the same type of music the soundtrack of your business I have clients I've seen clients even have soundtracks on they use their shop playlist on Spotify and on their websites they share hey you want to listen to our Spotify um, shop soundtrack 
Spotify list. What do they call that? Anyway, I digress again. But uh, that like, think about that. Now people are actually at home listening to your soundtrack. You're like wired into their brain, right? We used to have clients all the time come in and tell us how much they loved our music. I mean, it, you know, they would, we had Frank Sinatra and Etta James, we had old shop standards is what we had, um, which my clientele absolutely loved. So what is the soundtrack of yours? And what is the smell? What's your signature smell? Um, what do you smell like? <laughs> that didn't, that didn't sound good, but you know what I mean? Okay. Number, where are we? Number six, your staff's appearance. Again, level up a little tiny bit. What can you do a little tiny bit, a little tiny bit better to make sure that your staff appearance is good? And I know that that sounds touchy and, um, but it's really important to make sure, you know, that grooming and maybe aprons and or t-shirts or uniforms, whatever you have going on, making sure that, uh, you know, they, everybody looks good and is groomed well and is, you know, I'm not going to talk about that too much, but you know, you have to have those conversations. You have to have that in your policies, procedures. I'm a big believer in making sure that your staff have either an apron or a t-shirt or something that identifies them as being a member of your team and your staff. Um, whether you're a one person, you know, one staff member at, at a time, or whether there's a whole team of people in that's my two cents. You do you, but I am a big believer in that. And it is important for your staff's appearance. Again, just the way they present themselves um, to your customers uh, can make a little bit of difference, right? Like just 1% different. So number seven, uh, we're getting there, I promise. Uh, flow in your shop. So the flow in your shop. Again, um, merchandising, you know, it might look beautiful, but making sure that it's really easy to get around your shop. This is just um, good old fashioned merchandising. Again, if you're an inner circle member and you're listening, we have an entire masterclass on this on how to be intuitive and how to make sure, um, during your merchandising that you're merchandising for ease and for flow. Um, if you're not in the inner circle, you should join us. But if you're not, um, if you're not in the inner circle, um, you know, just understanding, just thinking about walking through your shop with a bag, you know, I'll put a, put a big old purse over your shoulder or whatever you need to do. And again, little tiny things. This is not something that, again, a customer is going to, um, you know, complain about. Well, they might, but you know what I mean? They might not, but it just might be like that gut check that they just, oh, it's so cramped in there. I don't like going in there or whatever that might be. So let's make sure that the flow in your shop works for your people. All right. Number eight, this is a weird one but it's not. <laughs> so this is, again, one of those things that's going to help you level up your shop. This is you, if you're the shop owner, and I assume you are, if you're listening to this, um, you stepping in fully to your CEO role when you need to. It's you taking the time of, you know, whether it's a CEO date, um, which we encourage, and you've heard us talk about it. We have a podcast on, on running a CEO date, um, doing your CEO date, being proactive in your business, not reactive, making sure your staff are scheduled in advance, making sure payroll's done on time, making sure, you know, I know that's little things, but making sure you're fully stepping into your leadership role so you can pay attention to where the trouble spots are upstream right before they happen. So we're not, again, we're not always reacting and we're not all chaotic because that's not a great way to lead, right? We can't lead from a place of chaos. You know, taking time to think and plan out your events and plan out your team and plan out like what they need, planning out the flow, planning out the chaos, planning out and listening to your people, um, prioritizing like feedback, right? So maybe part of this CEO role that you need to really take time to is, you know, listening to your staff where they say, you know, um, you know, we need to assess the cleaning protocols or whatever. I'm sure staff are never asking, never saying that. That was like kind of funny, right? But, you know, maybe they could help you figure out the chaos behind the counter, but you need to take time as the CEO as the owner, as the queen bee, as the head honcho, whatever you're calling yourself, as the queen bee role, as Mike McCallowitz says, if that's your role, um, to make sure that the business is operating as it should. And these are the things that 
level up your shop. It's a ripple effect, right? It's a ripple effect. If you're paying attention and your staff are happy because again, they have their, they have their payroll, they have their, they're being listened to, they have their schedule well in advance. You've got events planned or whatever, your promotional calendars are done, everything's done in advance as much as possible. I mean, this isn't la la twinkle toes land. I understand that it's a lot of busy things, but understanding that paying attention to the and doing your job as the CEO and paying attention to your own ecosystem, right? Your, your business ecosystem, um, all the things that it takes to run a business are really important to us. So, and it's important to the, to the, to that leveling up, to helping you level up, helping you be a little bit better, right? Than your competition or anybody else around. So that's part of it. Uh, Number nine, as we move along here, uh, number nine in how a simple way to level up your shop is service. And I know you're thinking, oh yeah, okay, we can skip this because we have great service. But remembering to that the um, having leadership values and having cultural things in place so that your staff and you are coming from a generous, attentive, and genuine mindset about serving clients, not just moving them through, not just looking at them as a, you know, as a sale, everybody coming in, or not just getting it done, not just throwing it up. You know, there is a complete difference in a customer's experience when they feel like they are being served versus sold to. There's a difference. People feel it. I don't know how to explain it, but I hope you understand what I'm talking about. Having a generous, again, I'm going to say this again, generous, attentive, and genuine mindset about service. And I feel like the majority of people that are listening to this, and if that's you, um, most of my listeners really are coming from a place of service and understanding and wanting to serve best. But we're also, like we say that, but then when the reality is we're so busy or um, or our staff is busy or or the shop is busy, you know, it's just, we don't always remember that that's our job (laughs) and uh, guilty of that as well. Like we all are. So just making that a priority. And again, that's part of our, um, business culture, part of our leadership, um, and having those values to back like the, the standards, operating policies and procedures and cultural you know, our mindset in our business and how we, this is how we do things. The culture of our business is a, from a place of service. So making sure that that's, that's an important part for your business. Okay. Number 10, last but not least, I promised you we'd get there. Investing in proper upgrades of your shop. So by this, I mean, not letting things get shabby, not letting things, um, not letting things go sideways or yeah. and I actually I wrote down in my notes here shabby is as shabby does and I know I just said that the other day in one of my last podcasts um, but we want to make sure that we are paying attention and again part of our CEO role or part of our team culture getting our team involved you know do you have lights burnt out is your flooring scuffy and yucky are things wearing out because things do wear out right <laughs> making sure and again this goes to the cleanliness and stuff but it also goes to making sure that we're updating our POS system, maybe we haven't updated or upgraded it in a long time. And maybe that's time. Maybe we need to do that. Maybe we need to upgrade, you know, other things like policies and procedures. Maybe we need to update our SOPs. And um, we've just kind of like, let things slide. And you know, uh, it's become, um, I heard this the other day, like just a culture of conversation now, like the, the training isn't really, it's just like um, vocalized now it's not really written down anywhere anymore because it's so outdated so maybe we need to upgrade and enhance and uh, evolve our policies and procedures maybe our refund policy needs to be changed maybe our website needs to be updated maybe we need to invest in that when's the last time you know in, and again I'm not a just FYI I'm not a huge believer that we need to spend a ton of money on things like websites and stuff I mean if there's other things that need to be done but maybe it needs a refresh maybe it needs an update you know when is the last time you know you bought new equipment for if you have a workshop or studio is it time is it time like your I work with a lot of paint retailers are your paintbrushes all like really grody now and it's like oh it's time to get some new buckets and some new brushes and some new you know whatever is it time of those rickety chairs ready for you know do they need to be fixed um is it time you know 
something need to be updated, especially after a few years of business, you know, we need to make sure that we're staying current in all the things. So in our equipment and in our policies and our procedures and just asking ourselves, I guess, if we are investing in the proper care of um, keeping things updated and, you know, ready to ready to roll, right, as they say. And that, again, is something uh, we don't want it to be like signs of neglect to our customers. And again, not something that's super obvious to customers, but it's, you know, it's there, right? They kind of notice it. So all of these little things, they're small shifts in building an excellent business, right? They're all small shifts in leveling you up. They're small shifts in, you know, they're like baby steps and that over time, all these little things they can, they really matter and they can make your customers feel so good if you're paying attention to these. And over time, those little baby steps, you know, they, they turn into big leaps and bounds. Like they really make a difference to your customer. So as a reminder to do all things with excellence in your business, and this is, you know, everything we do, um, if we can just make sure that we're, you know, we're tweaking and paying attention. So I hope you found these 10 simple things, going to go over them really, really quick, cleaning your shop, making sure that the chaos is not obvious behind your counter, make sure that we have the chaos under control, ease of checkout, signage and pricing on everything sounds smells like what does it sound and feel like in your shop making sure your staff um, are the appearance of your staff are is you know a little bit leveled up making sure the flow is good make sure you're stepping into your ceo role making sure that we are um, paying attention to our service and coming from an attentive and genuine mindset uh, and investing in like upgrading things as they need it, as they need to. So that's your 10 things today, my friends. Um, hopefully that you found something that you can take away and you can maybe, you know, just address a little tiny bit better. I would love to know if you update, upgrade, make a change on any of these things. Um, you know, I truly believe that your customers and your staff Right. And I think now, you know, we really, again, we need to also include our staff. So your customers and your staff are going to experience your shop in a much better light and feel, you know, feel so much better about being around and being there and spending their money and spending their time there. Right. So that's what it's all about. So thank you so much. Um, don't forget, if you found this helpful, please let us know, you know, share it with your friends, take a screenshot, tag me in Instagram, and, you know, we'll be sure to share your information as well too. Um, leave a review if you can. It would be so, you know, we are always so grateful if you can leave a review. And again, share us with any of your biz buddies that you may have. Have. that's how we spread the word of the podcast we're so grateful to have you here our podcast uh, downloads are just going through the roof and I don't know I'm just humbled um, that you're all listening so if you listen this far today thank you you're kind of making my day we will see you next week on the creative shop talk podcast have a fantastic week my friend we'll see you soon Well, that's it for this week's episode of the Creative Shop Talk podcast. I'm so glad that you're here to join us this week, and I hope you found value in what we're sharing here. I want to remind you that our website has all of the show notes. You can find it at wendybatten.com slash podcast. Everything that you need to hear about today's podcast is there. Also an opportunity if you need to reach out to me. If I can support you in any way whatsoever, please feel free to reach out. So thanks for joining us. Please leave a review, subscribe if you can, and never miss an episode. We hope to see you back here again next week. Thanks, my friend. Have a great week.